discovery. So here he's trying to escape some unknown flying thing, a vampire, and he struggles to open his car door, and then he and the car door are ripped away into the air, and how the f*** is this supposed to have happened? Fat security dude has nowhere near the strength to rip a car door off with his bare hand, but it was his hand on the door handle. And while vampires do have tremendous strength, this one would have been exerting said strength on the security guard's armpits, in which case the dude's arms would have just ripped off, but nothing would have happened at the car door. This sh should be taught in physics classes as to what doesn't count. Now, I think you're really gonna like living in Santa Carla. Santa Carla is a fictional place, and it's supposed to be similar to the real city of Santa Cruz. But also, there is a Santa Clara, California. So I guess the sin is lazy fictional town naming? He switched two letters. Two. Wow, Machine Gun Kelly stole his whole fucking look from this movie. Also, as mentioned, this movie takes place in Santa Carla, which is fictional for Santa Cruz. But they didn't bother to swap out the license plates. Licking your pet rat. Holy f Looks like he's dead. No, he's just a deep sleeper. Who sleeps on his front porch? Like this. He is just faking to scare them or make them laugh or f I don't know. But I still find it odd that Lucy is acting as if finding her father like this is perfectly normal. This is a pretty cool place. Yeah, for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Sam would be the Cory at CinemaSense. There's no TV. Have you seen a TV? I haven't seen a TV in my... Sam is correct about there being no television in Grandpa's house, but he's only walked through two rooms, one of which was a kitchen. And I know it's hard to believe, but in 1987, not everyone had a TV in their kitchen. So, just because Sam's right doesn't exclude the fact that Sam is severely impatient. If all the corpses buried around here was to stand up all at once, we'd have one hell of a population problem. Okay, super obvious vampire foreshadowing aside, isn't this true of any place that has existed as a city for a hundred years or so? Don't they all have lots of buried corpses? Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. That does not make sense. This is a boardwalk death rock concert with literal fires amongst the audience. So why did 12 fans show up with helium balloons? I've never been to a rock concert that has flaming trash cans on stage. Does it make things sound better? How many times while watching a movie can you say this person will eventually become a part owner of the Atlanta Hawks? So the sin, as always, is the Atlanta Hawks. She sees the Help Wanted sign at the restaurant, and this is the vampire version of the Karate Kid. They moved across country to California. Mom takes a minimum wage job. Son is bullied by locals. Old man knows about stuff, but is cagey about revealing details. There's a Goonies advertisement in this scene, and I'm wondering, has Edgar ever seen the Goonies? Because if he has, he must be wondering how he appeared in that film under the pseudonym Corey Feldman. I'm at the mercy of your sex glands. Telling your brother you're at the mercy of his sex glands. Just scope in your civilian wardrobe. You can't dress like this and then criticize someone else's wardrobe. Actually, I'm looking for a Batman number 14. That's a very serious book, man. Only five in existence. If there are only five in existence, they should be laughing at this poser for thinking he might find one on the Santa Carla boardwalk. For such a serious comic collector, Sam has no clue how to hold a comic book properly. He would never bend the comic at the middle of the spine like this. Also, your mother is struggling so much to make ends meet that you had to move to a different city and live with your grandfather, but sure, be in here shopping for older, expensive comic books. Phoenix, actually. But lucky me, we moved here. Being upset you had to leave Phoenix. Let me see if I have this straight. The production couldn't be bothered to create fake Santa Carla license plates and just use Santa Cruz ones, but then they went and spent God knows what on a full 20-foot wide neon Santa Carla sign? Come on, she stiffed you. I mean, the stiffness is probably gone now that Michael has seen Star ride off in the night with David. We're talking about boners, right? This movie saves a ton of money by shooting around most of its vampire attacks, and it's kind of genius. This scene confuses me. It adds nothing to the story. Also, who is even committing this murder? It barely makes sense that this could be David and his crew, since they just left the boardwalk. I guess it could be Max, but he was at the video store talking to Lucy. So was this just to set up a red herring that the Frog Brothers might be vampires since this guy stole from them? Because that's f***ing stupid. Wait, can I drive on the way back? Movie teases the following summer's adventures with the Corys. You hear that, Sam? Just like a baby pussycat. That sounds nothing like a baby pussycat. That is a loud, sustained roar. A baby pussycat does high-pitched mews that you might not even hear. Did this movie or this guy just want to say pussy in front of the word cat like they were getting away with something? Because I think so. I thought we were going to town. Uh, that's as close to town as I like to get. What in the, what in the f*** is this movie supposed to be? A comedy? A horror film? A coming-of-age drama? Because it tries to be all three, and scenes like this are all over the place tonally. Why is this scene? I think we just work in a comic book store for our folks, huh? Actually, the fact that you work here is brand new and surprising information. Hey, man, read this. I told you, I don't like horror comics. And that was just a couple scenes ago. Might have even been the previous night. Why are we repeating this information? Think of it more as a survival manual. There's a number on the back. Then why didn't they just give Sam the comic with their number on the back last night? The Frog Brothers might be good at their jobs. Spoiler alert, they are not, but they are definitely terrible in the marketing department. So the girl he liked from afar rode off with a motorcycle gang and he immediately goes and buys a leather jacket on a pier? <laughs>
What a poser. This movie has more trash can fires than regular trash cans. Where are you going, Star? We're going to find out later that Michael is supposed to be Star's first victim. So I'm not sure why David is blocking the out of the situation. We also find out later that Max wanted Michael and Sam turned, so Lucy would be more accepting of his proposal to spend the rest of her life with him. And if David knew that, then why would David have told Star to make Michael her first victim? The motivations of this movie make no sense. <laughs> Giving your little brother up to the fates. How are the Lost Boys riding their bikes in a formation like this on the beach with all these people scattered around them? They're like the annoying family at Disney World that all walk side by side holding hands so no one can pass them. He is chasing after a group of known dickheads on motorcycles as they leave the city and drive into the forest, all because he really thinks that girl is hot. And this might be a Hall of Fame Power of Boners moment right here. There is so much fog in the scene, I feel like either Joel Schumacher let John Carpenter shoot this sequence, or he paid him off so he wouldn't sue. Michael, David, and Star somehow don't thumb and Louise off this clip, even though they are riding too fast to stop in time. How far are you willing to go, Michael? I mean, with you or with her? I guess second base either way. God, even the vampires have flaming metal trash cans. You know, I can never sleep with a closet door open either. Not even a crack. Here's an excellent entry for the most oddly forced exposition of all time award. <laughs> Grandpa has the most amazing timing. You could almost call it convenient. And you know how we feel about that around here. Feeding time, come and get it, boys. Even without David's eventual mind tricks he plays with the food, Michael shouldn't even be thinking about eating that Chinese food. You don't like rice? Tell me, Michael, how could a billion Chinese people be wrong? <laughs> That's racist. They make him see worms only to show him there are no worms, which is weird because usually vampires just bite the people they want to turn or kill. But in this case, they feel some need to creep him out before they make him part of their gang. Whose job is it to make sure all these candles are lit perpetually in case the vamps bring home a ritual kill? Monster, go home! Bring some of this, Michael. Be one of us. This is your actual pitch to him? You do all this elaborate shit, and then you offer him a creepy liquid? You went 80% of the way there, marketing-wise, but then you shit the bed. Michael. 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 Michael Emerson! Come on down! I get that he already unwittingly drank the blood and stuff, but I can't believe he doesn't take off running at this point. We can't even call it the power of boners anymore because the girl he likes is nowhere around. He is so, so stupid. Michael, you one of us! Let go! <laughs> this eventually works. Ah! ah! Instead of showing us all the cool vampire sh he and the Lost Boys did last night, let's instead just show Michael landing on his bed asleep. That is so much more exciting. You come home in the middle of the night, you sleep all day. Wasn't that literally just last night? And the one time? The hell? Who's the earring, Michael? It's not you. When did he get the earring? I'm beginning to think this movie shot a bunch of sh between the first night Michael spent with the vamps and today and just cut it all. But this is still literally the next day, no? When is earring? All you do is give attitude lately. You watching too much Dynasty, bud? Dynasty references aside, there is no TV in Grandpa's house, so this burn has no basis of fact to be a sick one. <laughs> Michael and Sam will watch all these shiny lights and hear all the motorcycle noise, but when Michael opens the door, no one is there. I get that vampires can fly and all that shit, but they would still have to do something with their bikes, so how did they get away this quickly, leaving no trace of ever being there? Go take your bath. Sam wasn't even finished making his sandwich before all this went down, so he definitely hasn't eaten it. Why does he have to go take his bath now? This is a sin for the fact that I have never had as much fun in the bath as this kid is having right now. <laughs> Another instance of the movie building the tension, but letting the main action happen off screen. It's genius, I tell you, and it leaves us with questions as to who won that fight. But also, that door would not have closed on its own, and you all know it. Your creature of the night, Michael. You seem like 10% as concerned about this as you should. My own brother, a goddamn sucking vampire. Who you wait till mom finds out, buddy. Telling on your brother for becoming a vampire. This guy has a poster of reformed schoolgirls on his wall, and that says a lot about this character. Placing flammable apparel on top of a lamp. I'm your brother, Sammy, help me! If he had managed to say this while standing upright, this might have worked, but instead he's floating out here like a vampire, so wait, it still works. You got carried away by a comic book? Something only a non-comics reader could ever say. If Laddie's picture is still showing up on milk cartons, how has no one seen him around? He's all over that f***ing carnival on the boardwalk. Mom? Huh? Could I sleep in here with you tonight? No matter how scared, I legitimately don't think there are many real-world teenagers that would ever ask this or do this. I'm not judging you if you were a teenager and still sleep with your mom when you were scared, but I am sinning you, so there's that. You been eating pizza? No. Why? Woo! You smell like garlic. Was Sam under the impression Lucy wouldn't notice the large pieces of garlic around his neck? Who's there? 
All this f***ing around with Max early on by the Lost Boys doesn't make a lot of sense. I get it's to make us not think he's the master, but since he is, why are they messing around with him so much? Couldn't he just kill them if he wanted? See how none of the candles in this place are lit right now? That means one of the vampires has to go around lighting them all every night, and that just seems tedious. Michael's only lived here a few days, and even he's already learned that Santa Carla is all about the trash can fires. What's happening to me, Star? Pretty sure you're about to get lucky, Michael, although I'm not sure how this is the time or place, or why David won't be pissed about this. I wish I could play some of it for you, but the soundtrack for this movie is freaking rad. He's reading vampire comics because they're supposedly based on reality, and did M. Night see this and get the idea for Unbreakable, or what? Santa Carla's become a haven for the undead. <laughs> why? Why is Santa Carla, which appears to be California's answer to Ocean City, New Jersey, such a haven for vampires? The movie keeps telling me it's a haven for vampires, but never tells me why. Why do the Frog Brothers continue to display these comics outside the store like this if they have issues with people stealing them? Max never comes in till after it's dark. How does Sam know this fact about Max? It smells good. When do we eat? I told Max. Eight o'clock. Are you insane? Who eats supper at 8 p.m.? That's on the early edge of nighttime snack time. Supper is between five and seven and everyone knows this, except the old people who eat dinner at four because of reasons. Max arrives to the house when it's already been dark outside for a bit, but Michael's mother just said, I told Max. Eight o'clock. And during the summer in California, it would still be light out at eight o'clock. Sam Grady the cheese himself. Are you f***ing serious? You got divorced and moved out here to live with your dad, and you work at a video store, and you are grating your own Parmesan like Richie f***ing Rich? You buy store brand pre-grated Parmesan and you know it. Garlic? How did that happen? And how didn't Lucy already smell it, considering her nose was so on point the other night when Sam was wearing garlic around the neck? So Grandpa doesn't trust this guy. This is the second time we've seen this, and even though he says at the end that he's known about the vampire vampires in Santa Carla all along, he still didn't intervene here or warn his daughter that she was dating a damn vampire. Michael watches the vampires do a bunch of trippy shit around a fire and then yells no and falls down into the sand. That's the sin. That description you just read is the entire sin. You'll never grow old, Michael, and you'll never die. The first part might be true, but David can't promise the second part of this statement because Michael absolutely can die. It would just have to be in a very specific kind of way. She's one of them! Star walks in without being invited, which could be because in this film's lore, you don't have to be invited in. We find out a really stupid thing that happens if you do invite vampires in, but more on that later. However, if they don't have to be invited in and Max wanted Sam turned as well, then why didn't the Lost Boys come on in the other night when it was just Michael and Sam instead of pulling the riding the motorcycles outside and hollering hoopla? Like Laddie and me. We're not one of them until, until you make your first kill. Interrupting half vampires. The fact that Grandpa is putting in fence posts with rounded pencil sharpened tips at the top should telegraph the ending to anyone who has ever built a fence post before. Don't you touch her! You stay away from her! I get the vampires are sleeping, but they're not f***ing deaf. Might want to lower your voice there, Pacino. Later, when Bill and Ted get stabbed, all the other vampires wake up from the commotion. I feel a draft. I think there's something up here. Is it wind? A hole in the roof? How can a draft lead you to evidence of anything? There's a smell. Vampires, my friend. If vampires smelled super bad, how could they ever infiltrate the culture to find new girlfriends and victims? Uh, come on, guys, looks like a dead end. This movie has so much Goonies in it, I'm surprised there isn't a one-eyed Willy reference. Remember, you just have to kill a leader, huh? We don't know which one the leader is. I guess we'll just have to kill them all. Or all three of you could go up and stab one each at a time, giving yourselves a better chance at getting the leader. And I say this knowing the leader isn't any of them, but the Frog Brothers and Sam don't know that, so why are they going about this like idiots? The Frog Brothers drop at least two or three stories and somehow retain the use of their legs. Why does the death of a lower level vampire cause the entire cave to shake? This is now two instances of people trying to Thelma and Louise, and that is too, too many in a movie not called Thelma and Louise. Santa Carla's crawling with vampires. When you have this wacky a story to tell a loved one, don't open with the flat facts like this. It will only get you laughing at or labeled insane. Also, he just called it Santa Clara, not Santa Carla. And since they'd already spent all that money on the neon Santa Carla sign, they didn't have any left to do another take of the scene. Stealing holy water. Chekhov's trailer with a bunch of spiky logs on it. I realize that he is trying to destroy garlic to spread the smell of it so the vampires will be afraid to show up here. At least I think that's what he's doing. But the sin is, where the th did he buy a red net sack full of 300 cloves of garlic? Not even the price clubs would sell this bag, and I don't even think they really existed in this era. That bag of garlic is a huge f***ing lie. Vampire killers have a prepping for the kills montage and a vampire movie cliche. I think this is literally one of the shots of the night ocean we saw back in this film's opening. I think I should warn you all. 
When a vampire buys it, it's never a pretty sight. Yeah, they all saw that earlier. Not sure why Edgar waited till after that incident to have this teaching moment. Does this movie have any explanation for why vampires equal wind? I say we terminate them right now. What the f has made Edgar change course so quickly? One goddamn vampire flew down the fireplace and now he's ready to just murder everyone. Nanook ex machina. Also, how did Nanook know the vampire needed to be put in the bathtub? This vampire bathtub death goes on for an embarrassing amount of some time. Where's all this blood coming from? Is it supposed to be coming from the vampire they just killed in the bathtub? Because that drain should have been closed. And even if it wasn't, this amount of blood coming out of one human or vampire is ridiculous. This makes the Johnny Depp sucked into his bed scene in A Nightmare on Elm Street look totally logical. He uses a lampshade like a spotlight, and that is not how lampshades work. I think the biggest issue with these vampires is that they tend to laugh a lot when they should be killing a lot. I'm honestly quite surprised they've made it this long. Sam isn't that far away, but had he even shot a bow and arrow before today? This is still a hell of a hard shot for a newbie to make. No one will be seated while his vampire takes roughly 15 minutes to die. Death by stereo. <sighs> They're awesome monster bastards. The meanest. The baddest. Sam and the Frog Brothers have worked together for less than a day, and they already have a handshake worked out? Stop! Get away from him! I'm so protective of him, I was hiding in this closet instead of where he was hiding. <laughs> Straight through the heart, you gave it to him. Straight through. Well, you passed the test. Don't ever invite a vampire into your house, you silly boy. It renders you powerless. What kind of bullshit is this rule? Wouldn't it mean a stake through the heart would have no effect as well? Because we're about to find out it most definitely does. It was you I was after all along, Lucy. Well, now that can't possibly be true. David and your boys have been at it for years. You may have been after love, but you were not after her specifically all these years, you lying dick. So in this movie's mythology, you can turn another person into a vampire by biting them? And if that's the case, what's with the blood that Michael drank when David could have just bit him? Grandpa shows up, blowing his distinctive horn to a announce his presence ahead of time, mind you, and finally the spear-cut tree limbs make sense as the one that was apparently perfectly aligned by nature spears Max through the heart. One thing about living in Santa Carla I never could stomach. All the damn vampires. This slide is so great it makes me wonder if they built the entire film around it. I'm You better not be jacking off to the Japanese comics, I swear to God. It's leave, you idiot. Make like a tree and leave. You sound like a damn fool when you say it wrong. Where are you going, Star? Cleveland. I can't beat your bike. You don't have to beat me, Michael. You just have to try and keep up. Drink some of this, Michael. Be one of us. One of us. Yeah, the one of us. <laughs> See me! Open up! They say this one has a surprise ending. How's the peeping? Tommy. How's the peeping? 